Hello and welcome to my game review series. Today we're going to talk about two classic platformers. First one is going to be Super Mario Brothers for the NES. And the second one is going to be Klonoa uh, Door to Pandemile for the PlayStation 1. Uh, which I recently completed. And has apparently does some assassinations, but I'm not playing the game, I'm just using the game as a visual uh, a visual aid, I was about to say, but something to, to have something to look at. Now, um, if you just want the audio, I, you can just basically turn off your screen, I guess, and just listen to me rant and talk bollocks. But uh, let's get on with it. First game is going to be uh, Super Mario Brothers for the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System, or the Famicom, as it's known in Japan. Now this, of course, is a classic game. Most people know it um, and love it. Uh, and I do ag I agree, it's an amazing, amazing game. Um, some of the things I really loved about it is that the, the the level is a great level design. It's a simple level design, but this is an old school game. Uh, but uh, it, it's actually a good thing that they keep it kind of simple. Not there's not too much to look at to distract you, and there's not too many. Uh, shut up, phone. There's not too many uh, different things to do like in in like like Sonic I like Sonic but it's a different game Sonic is more in my opinion a stressed game where you really have to concentrate a lot to do what you d d uh, to not die whereas in Super Mario Brothers and the other most other Mario Brothers game it's it's more relaxed even though it's a t it's timed it's it's still more relaxed because you don't have to be constant on the move as you in a lot of the Sonic levels do. Now, what I didn't like about the Mario Bros. is the same thing that I didn't don't like about uh, a lot of platformer games actually, is the fact that he can't stop uh, at instantly. Like, that is really trouble. That I've always had trouble with that when you land and then you just keep moving for a little bit, like when you jump and then land and you know just <laughs> and so that in my opinion is annoying as hell and it's a difficult game it is uh, but not too difficult I can't remember I think I, re I completed the game in I don't know a day maybe two days maybe three but like not entire day spent it's a it's a it's a, f a quick game if you know what you're doing if you don't know what you're doing well then it can take forever because like I said it is difficult now the the boss level uh what's his name I can't remember his name uh you know who I'm talking about the boss the big kahuna guy the that always seems to um to 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 be after Mario. I don't think I can't remember his name. I've really never been a big Mario fan because and I never really played many Mario games, so that's the reason why I really can't remember Bowser. That's his name. Shit. <laughs> I should remember stuff like that. But yeah, the Bowser uh, fights in the at the end of each every third level, I think it is. It's been ages since I played Super Mario Bros., so that's why I don't really remember it that well. But yeah, at the end of the l levels, it's if you tried, I'm I'm glad that I knew that you weren't actually supposed to fight Bowser. I think you can, but you're just supposed to jump over him and like hit that uh, take. I think if you take an axe and you, you you like chop the bridge down. I think that's what it's supposed to look like. But if you didn't know that, then the, it can be could be can be really hard. And I think it's kind of cheap that that you just can do uh, can do it like that but at the, at the same time it's an it's interesting and you get that little get a uh, toads message your princess is in a, is in a different castle jesus fucking christ <laughs> that's annoying and i think most mario brothers fans agree 
Now, like I said, I haven't really played many uh, Mario Bros. games because I'm not really never been a console player. I think I played the the first Mario game, the very very first. I'm not talking about the first he starred in, which is Donkey Kong, which I also I also played that. But I'm talking about Donkey and uh, no, I'm talking about Mario Brothers for the Atari 2600, uh, where you just where you have to jump up to the in, in the ceilings and uh, and and flip turtles. Uh, I think the game was also released for the NES, but it was like overshadowed by by Super Mario Bros. Of course, but sh if you haven't played the original Mario Bros., you should go ahead and do it. It's a, it's a lot different than than Super Mario Bros. But it's it's I I actually think it's more fun because it's 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 a simple game that you just sit down and play. It's not like and uh, well, Super Mario Bros. is that as well. But I I do enjoy Mario Brothers, the, the original Mario Brothers, more than I enjoy Super Mario Brothers. The only other two Mario Brothers games I've ever played is um, Mario 64, and uh, which I haven't played that much, and the new Mario Brothers for new Super Mario Brothers for the Nintendo Wii, uh, which I played a little bit more than M N Mario 64, but. Not really that much. I think also I did try Super Mario uh, RPG a bit, not much. But I, I do like Mario and I plan on playing uh, some more of the games because they are fun. Um, yeah, the, the second uh, platformer I'm going to review this time is... I kind of got reviewed of some other games as well. But yeah, the second planned review is... Uh, uh Klonoa Door to Pantomile, which I recently completed for the PlayStation 1. And this was a super fun game. Difficult as hell, but super super fun. It's one of those early 3D um platformers where you can see that the 3D isn't really implemented is that the right word? I think it is. But it, they don't use the 3D that much. Mostly it's for visuals, but there are times where you have to be careful of something coming out or from the out from the screen, like from the background or from the foreground. And sometimes you even have to throw enemies uh, into the background. So they do use the 3D, but mostly it's for visuals. Uh, it's the same as in games like... Uh, Pandemonium. I mean, if you look at a game like Crash Bandicoot, they use the 3D a lot more in that game as you actually move three-dimensional. You do that too in Klonoa, but it's on a straight path, so you don't really have to like turn uh, to go in another direction to move in the three dimensions, if, you, if that makes sense. It's a super fun game. I like the fact that you use the enemies and throw them at people. But it had its... Stop looking, sexy girl. That's not a time for that now. I'm reviewing a game. Stop distracting me. Um, also for those of you who have turned on the audio, which is probably none. That was a girl in the game acting weird. But I don't actually know if people would turn, o turn off the audio, what I'm saying. Turn off the wi video the visuals. I don't know. There are no reason for this, for the visuals in itself, but I, I just like to to do it like this. Um, but yeah, Dark to uh, One of the things... Uh, Dark to Klonoa? Yeah. <laughs> that was wrong. One of the things that uh, didn't really work in the game was the fact when you... that confused me as hell was the fact when you you could throw, you actually b only used two of the buttons. The other two did the exact same as the, the first two. So, But one of them were to jump and the other one was to th uh, catch or throw the enemies. And thus, of course, you had to do a double jump. Then you actually th th uh, threw uh, your, uh, the enemy you were carrying down and you could jump faster. So I often accidentally pressed down and the, the uh, down directional key and and uh, and then oh what's the window I broke oh here it is and then uh, shot because I thought oh yeah that's how you do it but no 
it wasn't. You had to just d d d jump and press the jump button again, and that was kind of confusing because there were times where you had to jump up, catch someone, and still while being in the air, uh, throw him down to go further up, catch someone, and do it again. And so that con was a bit confusing because you had to switch between buttons really fast, and some of the when you and it doesn't didn't really make total sense. Another really annoying thing was when you would uh, jump on like there were these uh, like jump pads. I can't actually remember what they were. I think they like like where you jump higher. But if you accidentally held if you held an enemy and j while jumping on those, there was a big chance that you would instead just throw the enemy down, as in the double jump thing, uh, because you had to you could when jumping on these platforms these uh, jump pads you actually you should jump when you were direct when you touched them so if you jumped a little too early a little too late you would instead just throw the enemy which was just really frustrating the bosses were another frustrating thing it was just like in Crash Bandicoot where you didn't actually know what the hell to do who to hit and where to hit them or anything like it and that was i mean yes it's it's good to y you would lose a couple of lives to while figuring out what the hell to do and i wish that it was either a little more obvious what you had to do maybe it was and i just didn't know it uh but either that or the dead actually had some instruction that would have been nice the bosses were annoying as fuck there was this boss that had his uh some hands that flew around him and these were used as shield. Now these did not cover, they did not even cover 25% of his body. But they d were, were spinning around, of course. But still, more than 50% of the time I would hit these shields. Now that doesn't add up. They didn't cover 25% of his body, but more than half, of, more than 50% of the time he would actually catch them. Other times you would couldn't uh, hit the enemy because he was too far away, and sometimes it was obvious that either he d didn't hit you, but you took damage, or the other way around, you hit him and he didn't take damage. So the the hit boxes of the enemies were a little bucky. Now this is an early uh, 3D platformer, so it, there will be some things that they hadn't entirely figured out, but the bosses. At first, the first couple of minutes while fighting the boss, it was interesting, but after that, they were just annoying. The, the levels themselves were interesting, really well made, and some really fun puzzles in them. Although, the, the game was frustrating at times, but I would say that Klonoa Door to Pandemile, if you haven't played it yet, I would say go ahead and play it. It's a fun game and so is Super Mario Brothers for the NES. Now I think this is it for now. I uh, hope you enjoyed this and hope you could use some of the information I gave you about the game. Maybe you agree with me, maybe you don't, maybe you thought think maybe you thought about playing one of these games. You probably already played Super Mario Brothers. Uh but it, maybe you haven't played Klonoa and maybe now you you'd like to. I don't know. But, uh, hey, let me know in the comments below what your favorite platformer is. Uh, actually, so let me know chaos. what your favorite 2D so platformer time. and what your pla- What did you say? He said something. Oh, and what your favorite 2D platformer and what your favorite 3D platformer is. I, I would like to know. Maybe I'll play them. Not on the channel, though. Maybe just for myself, because who knows? Maybe I'd like them. Anyway, I'll see you next time for more game review, and I'll see you tomorrow for more games. Bye.